All right, let's give us some value. So let's talk about my ex hurts. What do I do? And so this you can replace oh. X. You can replace X for knee, elbow, shoulder, neck, ankle, foot, low back, hip, upper back, like upper back. my skull. Right. I don't care. Like something hurts, insert it in the X. So I've noticed that in these at home trainings that people's X hurts. And it keeps hurting, like more like, okay, X hurts. And then I give them some stuff and then it goes away. But I'm seeing a lot of my X hurts. I've done these things, but like I'm still hurting. So let's give me an example. Give me an example. So for example, someone that runs and has been doing team training five days a week has been like, my knee hurts. And we do, you know, we've mobilized the feet. We've done the calf. We've done the quad. We've done the hamstring. We've done the glute into the hip. And nothing is seeming to be like things feel make it feel better, but we just seem to not be able to nick it in the butt. What are you going to tell someone to do? So first off, uh, it's probably a volume thing, right? At the end of the day, right? It's probably a volume thing. And so if we're running four or five days a week and we're team training four or five days a week, and maybe we're doing the Saturday workouts and we're doing a bunch of other things, it's probably a volume thing. Um, and there may be something run, wrong with our mechanics. Um, maybe a running mechanic where we're putting extra stress on that knee. Um, so probably the first thing I would do is back off on the running. What? I said the first thing. You said first oh. thing. So I said what? Oh, you, were, you were like, you were like giving me the bullet point. We're on bullet point. One. one. So first thing is I was in decrease the volume. Right. And so like, first, like what hurts it? Like, when does it hurt? Is it hurting all the time? Is it hurting when I wake up in the morning? Is it hurting only after I do this workout? Is it hurting after I run? Is it hurting during my run? Does it hurt before my run? Does it feel better after I start running? There's a lot of things that like, there's questions that we need to ask and really pinpoint what's going on. Um, but first thing I was probably decrease volume, right? What if instead of running, you went uphill walking, right? We're still getting a cardio effect, but we are not putting the same jarring pounding on our legs. So I'm all for running and I run frequently by frequently mean a couple days a week um and if you think about what running is so i'm on the big video right now so you guys can see me dancing around so what running is is it's this motion okay i'm doing like a plyometric on every foot over and over and over and over and over and over again so if i just stood here and did this for like 30 minutes like yeah probably things would start to hurt after a while because it's a lot of compression it's a lot of pounding on the joints especially if we don't have the strength base to accommodate running or we maybe have a body type that isn't suited for running. So I know this is like, we can't include everybody with this, but like running is not an equal opportunity sport, right? <laughs> some bodies are built for running and some bodies are not built for running. Okay, let's, lose, let's use like the FF staff as an exact example. Trevor and Aaron and Jake are tall and long and lean. More, a better body type to run versus say, Ashley, who also looks like her quads could make the earth shake. Like so hip structure is an important piece of running, right? So I have a I have a fairly normal or probably narrow hip structure. Okay. So that means when my foot contacts the ground, it is pretty much under it's more from the front. It's pretty much underneath my hip. Okay. So for females in particular, especially ones with wide hips, they are now out wider. And so when they contact the ground, that contact is actually outside of their center of mass. And so that just puts a lot more stress on this thing right in the middle called your knee. Um, and so people with really wide Q angles is what the, the fancy term for it is, just put a lot more stress on their body. So it doesn't mean you can't run. It probably just means you shouldn't do a ton of volume of running. And maybe you should opt for uphill walking or other kind of lower impact, less stressful things. And it's part of just like figuring out what works for you. But also, like, maybe you are running and you've gotten great results and it's something that you enjoy and something that you like to do. But maybe, like, during this uh, shelter in place, you it's something that you were doing two or three days a week. And now you're trying to do it six days right. a week. Maybe you just go back to two or three and see how your body feels. Right. There wasn't that progression into the increased volume. So I think that's one of the good things about Run Club is Vicky's, like, kind of on top of people from a volume standpoint. You know, you don't just get to all of a sudden run one mile one week and then we're going 10 miles the next week. There is a progression that no. we need to put the body we through. Fancy, we get a fancy plan. Look at that. You know exactly what to do. And so I know, there's, and there's, 
And there's notes. Of course Vicky's there's notes. The she is, is the best. Vicky is on point. Um, and so we have this natural progression. We have to load the tissue progressively, right? It's like me. We get a golf simulator in FF24, and Trevor just decides to hit hundreds of golf balls every day. And guess what happens? He develops golfer's elbow because his elbows and his forearms were not ready for a repetitive action over and over and over and over again. And it's actually something I'm still dealing with now, and I haven't swung a golf club in two months. Okay, And so it doesn't stop me from doing things, but now I notice that those muscles are a little bit not necessarily muscles, it's more like tendon bone attachment, but they're just a little sketchy, right? And so we, progression is very important to pay attention to. And so going from being a non-runner to wanting to become a runner, there is a series of steps that we need to take. And if we decide to skip those series of steps, then from time to time, we're going to have a, my X hurts, right? And so I think what you said initially with some of the first things we would look at is let's decrease volume. Let's decrease the things that piss it off. Let's use common sense, right? If something hurts it, don't do it. Okay. I mean, I feel like that's pretty reasonable, right? And then the second step would be instead of doing that thing that might hurt it, let's replace it with like a mobility, soft tissue. Let's work on all of the structures upstream and downstream from the pain area. Let's mobilize. Let's create good tissue quality. Um, and let's make sure we're training other areas of our body. We don't just sit around. We just like, we just move our training to a different area, right? And then maybe we do some walking, uphill walking. If we want a little more of a cardio effect, we ride a bike, that kind of stuff. And then let's give it like a few weeks. Like it's not just like boom, magic. You can do magic every once in a while, but magic doesn't work all the time, right? And so, and then you just have to allow your body, especially if you really, really, really pissed it off, you're looking at a longer recovery, probably like a three to four month recovery type of stuff, especially if you're continuing with things. And so, um, and then we look at anti-inflammatory protocols, right? So we look like, what's our diet like? Uh, are we sleeping, are we recovering? Are we adding in something like a fish oil? Are we adding in like a curcumin? Are we doing like dark cherry juice? Um, those are really the main ones. So like, I mean, it's a multifaceted approach, but step one, yeah. stop, doing the, stop doing the things that piss it off. Mm -hmm. Step two, mobilize upstream and downstream of the pain area, work on tissue quality. And then three, kind of gradually start to build in exercise again for those body parts and then the other thing is is that like if this pain is ongoing and it like is really impeding you like don't do not be afraid to talk to a medical professional i think like you know like i am not a medical professional and i do a ton to try and help mobilize and help everyone feel their best and all this kind of stuff but like at some point like we're talking like it's been a couple weeks and we've done all these things and we're still not feeling better um, chiropractic, acupuncture, an MD, like those might be the path that you need to go on, um, to get that, the help that you need to feel your best. Because like, uh, I'm, and I usually hit chiropractic first just because maybe I'm out of alignment and that's causing some of my issues and that fixes everything, but that isn't the end all be all for everything. So, you know, take some steps in your own care to go seek a professional that can help you if you're not, not feeling better. Right. And ask questions, like ask questions. It's the beauty of having a coach. You have someone to ask to, they would know people to send you to. Um, and can also help kind of send you with some notes. Like here's what we've already done or here's what we've already tried. Okay. That allows that medical practitioner, that examiner to be able to kind of rule some things out. Right. So, um, and the other thing I think people need to be honest with is like, are you actually doing your mobility and your soft tissue work? Like, are you actually doing it? Or did you just like try it once? And then like I, nah, and then I got busy and then like I couldn't do it, right? So I can't complain about my elbows because I haven't done jack for my forearms, right? Like it's no surprise. You have a bendy bar that you could use when you do calls. 100%. It's sitting. It's like right there. No, it's I am, right there. It's right over there on the wall to your left. It's right there. I am kind of annoyed with you right now. Right. But I, but I, that, I don't have the right to complain about it. So that's the thing. Like I can't complain about it if I'm not doing anything to actively fix it, right? But I can't complain about something. If I'm not actually doing anything to help, I mean, really, people that. can complain whatever they, about whatever they want. You can complain about whatever well, you want. Yeah, we won't listen if we ask you if you're doing your mobility. Like, if we ask you if you're doing your mobility step and you tell us no, then we're like, all we can tell you is go back. And if you tell us yes and you really haven't been, like, the only person you're hurting is yourself. Like, that's the same as like when we talk about nutrition. Like, nutrition is like the same thing. Like, 
if you tell me you haven't been having any snacks, but truthfully you've been uh, snacking all the time, like it doesn't affect me. It affects you who is lying to me. So like just those are like some little like off the cuff things there too. And it's, it's, I think it's just being honest. It's just being honest with yourself and with whoever might be helping you and guiding you in the journey. Um, and so I, I've seen some comments coming in. Um, Wendy, it sounds like you need, are not hitting metabolic workouts hard enough if you are missing the lung, lung workout when you climb stairs and hills. Like, well, one, you can go do the stairs and the hills. The bleachers are open at the, at the high school and the hills are open in Ramsey Park and they are calling you. Um, but also, if you don't feel like you're getting like a metabolic component to your training um, in your training with FF, like you are doing something slacking on Monday, on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, because this cycle right now, Friday has a metabolic interrupt. Like and I am, and Saturdays is definitely metabolic. Like there are metabolic and that lung challenging lung component. So like that is, uh, that is the option. And then Aaron says her shoulder hurts. I haven't done any soft tissue work or mobility. I can't understand why my shoulder hurts. Aaron, you are the problem. Actually, Not probably with her, she doesn't actually need mobility and soft tissue work. She needs stability work because uh, she is too mobile. Do so, not diagnose your wife. Do not do it. Um, right. So oh, on this well, note. Um, I'm, I'm going to put this in the note, but I think that could be a really good thing for us to talk about. It's not going in for today, but I think talking about mobility, stability, and strength. Perfect. I love it. I love it. I'll riff on that all day. But uh, speaking of that, I'm going to tangent here. Uh, so a podcast that I listened to recently, uh, yeah. So, uh, a, a podcast that I recently, recently listened to a doctor kind of talked about, all right, in a week, what are things that we should get in? And he kind of gave some, some things that we should get in from an exercise standpoint. We should do something, what it, what challenges are high end strength. So we should challenge kind of in that low rep, really high load range. We should challenge something in the kind of hypertrophy muscle gain range. So that eight to 12 ish reps type thing. We should have at least 30 minutes of continuous activity once a week. Think a jog, a bike ride, something that keep your, keeps your heart rate in our my zone, green zone, right? And then uh, the fourth one is some high intensity interval training at some point during the week too. And so kind of four different components to a workout program, but we should be getting in most of those um, every day of the week, um, a heavy strength day, a more hypertrophy, lower load, higher rep day, a long, slow distance, just kind of, we would call it a cardio output day. And then we also have a intense, high intensity interval day where we're working really hard for a period of time and then we're resting, right? So think like sprints, uh, versus like a long, slow jog. So uh, it's kind of an interesting way to think about your week and just setting up your fitness regimen. And then we modify those based on what goals may be, right? So if I want to be elite from a strength level, then I do a few more strength days. If I want to be, you know, have a better body composition, I might add in a few more metabolic days. And, um, and so <clears throat> you can kind of fit it to what you want. Um, so let's move into the second piece. Um well, I really yeah. like that. And it really made me think about how we're writing new programs for our new, our new info, our new things. So I'm it like, like, thank you for inspiring me and sparking my joy today. It's probably my headband slash face mask yes. doubles. Um, Wendy, you are totally right. It is not the same as continuous uphill, going for a walk, going for a jog type thing. So yes, we need both though. Happy balance right. of all of them. Um, Aaron you know. said right, which makes me super happy. So arm bars forever, Aaron. Arm bars and suitcase carries. Arm bars and suitcase carries. Nice. 